All right, we copy. Need to get up for a shooting. 15-year-old male shot. The guy walks up, shoots him in the head. Now we're seeing execution style. Homicide Sanchez can help you. Tonight on 48 Hours. <laughs> the nation's capital. Cocaine crap causes them to do to do weird things. Violence is just part of the business. Several shots. 46 East Capitol. America's murder capital. Such a means to make Washington drug free. A community up in arms. Reclaim the community. We can't give up hope. We can't stop fighting. City Hall under fire. Oh, I've said very publicly that I think that the mayor's an abuser of drugs. This is a combat zone. They don't care if it's a baby or an adult or an old person. And families counting their dead. I miss my older son. It shouldn't happen to anybody's family. In a vicious drug war. It's the drugs, the crack, the drugs, the, drug, the crack. Two days and two nights in the other Washington. Armed and dangerous. Get in the back! Nineteen eighty-nine is well on its way to becoming the deadliest on record in Washington. Nearly three hundred murders so far. That means for the second year in a row, Washington has the highest murder rate in the nation. In fact, the leading cause of death for children in our nation's capital is homicide. They are victims in a vicious war over drugs. Last February, we spent forty-eight hours, Wednesday night to Friday night, in a Washington you won't see as a tourist. Right now, we're kind of limbo time. Things should start rolling around 10 o'clock. Homicide Sanchez can help you. 7.30 p.m. Wednesday, Washington's homicide branch, where every murder lands. But in order to close this case and make an arrest, we have to talk to people. So he thinks we know who did this murder. And tonight, the action begins early for detectives Ruben Sanchez Serrano and Louis Green. Cruiser 318, now what do you have out there? All right, we copy. Need to get up for a shooting. We got several shots. 46 East Capitol. Come on, Louis. Okay, uh, back mail 6 1. He said he saw him running. These people are better armed than we are, literally. And you got to be very careful when you come up on these scenes. You don't know who's firing at what and what's going to happen out here. You got to be very careful. Copy, uh, slip out a block away. Get caught out quick. You got another one in there? Cocaine, crack, violence is just part of the business. You can get rid so fast that everybody wants a piece of the pie. Go on and get your way on over to DC General. Oh, stay still. Your mama's on board. Just stay still. It's just her for us. You hang in there with me, baby. Me and you. Gunshot to the leg and to the shoulder. Entry, no exit. Blood pressure 140 over 80. Pulse is 120. Uh, good long sounds, good distal pulses. He's 17, OK? OK, we're on the scene. Hey, on the scene. hey officer. We need somebody out here for a minute. We need somebody to take the area off. Hey, folks, can you back up, please? You want to round up your witnesses quick before they have a chance to change your mind. Was he conscious when he left? Did he say who shot him? The person said, who is that? Who is that? And they just started firing. Open fire? Yes. Your brother involved in drugs? No. No. I need you to tell me the truth. Did you use any drugs? Cocaine, PCP, crack? We're not going to tell anyone. Just tell us. So we'll know. Cocaine, how long ago? No. No. no What's he doing tomorrow? You're gonna be all right. Just relax. We'll take care of you, okay? Uh, no. Police procedure makes homicide detectives grim specialists. If it's clear a victim will live, you think it's gonna be yours? I think so. All right. They turn the case over to others. Hey, we copy. Need to get up for a shooting. 103 Rodan Avenue Northwest. The Chinese Dragon. Copy. 
8.47 p.m. Murder is Ranger just a radio Ranger. call away. And what was that? They've uh, got two shot. They've got one dead on the scene. Oh, and one on the way to the hospital. So this one will be yours. This is a different one. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think that the average person would say this is a very busy night for you. Yes. Is it? At average. Average? Here we are, and two people shot here. There's helicopters flying over here. It's like a war going on that's here. Exactly, that's exactly what it is. People don't understand. That's exactly what's going on. It's a war, and we're losing. That's what's happening all over the country. Not only here, it's going to happen everywhere. Small cities are going to feel the repercussion of this crap. The murder scene is the Chinese Dragon, a takeout restaurant on a corner known for heavy drug trafficking. Oh, I hate a Can we help you, baby? Can we help you? No. All right. All right. <laughs> One victim is dead at the scene. The other is rushed to a hospital. From what we know, two subjects came in with a silver-colored handgun and uh, shot both of them. Both of them are young, 117, 118. Al Terrell, an eight-year veteran of homicide, and his partner, Evelyn Jones, have already started the hunt for clues and witnesses. It will be their case. We have to have an on-the-scene identification. This is the father of the victim who's making an identification. He just didn't want to, you know, he didn't want to admit to himself until he saw his face. And it was his only son, you know. And then you see your son down there. So I don't care what lifestyle he lived, that was, that was a hurting thing to him. Uh, all I can do is stand there, you know, just say, go ahead, you know, you let it out, uh, take your time. The dead youth, Leonard Morrison Jr., had been released from jail this morning on charges he sold drugs on this same corner. People have lost the reality, I believe. They just shoot and someone has to die. They got to kill him. They got to see blood running. It's incredible. His friend, Zachary Ray, also gunned down at the Chinese Dragon, lies critically wounded in a nearby hospital where a homicide detective is standing by. 45, possibly. Evelyn, uh, subject number two is uh, left MedStar to the ER. Gunshot wound to the face, in and out, right cheek, left cheek. However, he's got a severe gunshot wound, occipital area, and is still lodged in the top of his head. Uh, prognosis would be grave. We're going to uh, take out a bullet and uh, any dead brain tissue and clean him up and hopefully save his life. This trauma unit is very much a, a mash type unit and, and, and the feeling that we have here is very much of a, of a war front or a battlefield uh, atmosphere. Many times we see patients that are shot up with Uzis, AK-47s. Now we're seeing execution style uh, injuries, the type where the gun was placed right up into the patient's face or head or chest and the trigger pulled. You can usually save a good gunshot to the belly with, you know, one bullet. But when you got automatics out there and everything else, you bring them up here, my job's getting a lot more depressing because I can't save him anymore. Al Terrell's job is getting harder, too. The drug wars have brought a new code of silence to the streets. You say this is a drug area? They do a lot of selling there? Mm, I don't know. I know it's bad. In the busy block where the shooting happened, he can find no one who saw it. Did you hear the shooting? Not tonight. Not tonight? <laughs> what other Not tonight. Night? Okay, Not thanks, tonight. Man. You, did you see what happened? Did you see any shooting? 
At Homicide, Sanchez and Green take statements from people who worked in the carryout. Did you hear the gunshots? Okay. Did you see what happened? I, I can't see because I, I the back. We, we prepared the food. None of them saw anything. People are out here, but they are reluctant to come forth. They do not want to testify. They do not want to be involved at all. And without their help, we're useless. It's a losing battle. Right now, the number of murders that we're getting, uh, we don't have the luxury of time of going to investigate. All we do is have time to mark and move. Mark and move. Washington's Mayor Marion Barry trying to lead the charge against drugs. Up and hope. Up and hope. Up and hope. Down with dope. Down with dope. Tonight, he's surrounded by bodyguards and worried citizens as he marches along Mellon Street, a drug infested strip now controlled by dealers. Mr. Mayor, what good do you think you're doing as you walk through the neighborhood? Well, they're glad to see the mayor out here and the councilwoman out here. Uh -huh. And second, uh -huh. yeah, give them some hope that we're going to do something about this problem. So this drug problem is so complex, so complicated, that there's no single, simple solution to it. But you can't give up hope. You can't stop fighting. Mr. Mayor, we got a, an area mapped out for you that we'd like you to follow. OK. Uh, next stop, almost down to the circle. We recommend that we not go all the way to the circle. Drake Place in southeast Washington, <laughs> just across the river from the Capitol. You go ahead and walk. You walk with me. I'm going to take you. Walk here. I'll point in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> That's the location where we had our homicides for this year. How y'all doing? What can we do about this neighborhood? What can we do? Clean it out. Close it down. Huh? Close it down. What's up? What's shooting going right here? You get sick of it. Shooting can't go to sleep sometimes. How do you feel? as mayor of the nation's capital city. Walking around here tonight, you have on a bulletproof vest. <laughs> How does that make you feel? I feel, I, I feel like the mayors of New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, Cleveland, uh, Detroit. We all in battle. It's a reclaim the community. The idea of Mayor Barry making public drug marches is a joke to many. Well, I've known the mayor now, I would say, for over 20-some years. Who charged that Barry's personal problems make him the last person who ought to lead the war against drugs in D.C. Oh, I've said very publicly that I think that the mayor's an abuser of drugs. Calvin Lockridge is a school board member. He represents the district that includes Mellon Street, where the mayor made his night drug march. I have never seen the mayor use drugs. But I have sources who tell me that they have used drugs with the mayor, and I believe those sources. Have you ever used drugs? No. Never in your life? No. Because a lot of people here say no, I said that no. they've talked with people. They've talked, talked to with people. people who they don't know. They can't find who one did, soul. Who did use drugs with They you. can't find one soul that's, that's credible. I've been around Marijuana, people. Marijuana. Well, I, I don't need that. Cocaine. Don't need it. Crack. Don't need it. You, Marion Berry, are drug free. Don't need it. I go take it. Well, I, I won't take it now because I'm not for doing all that yeah, every but, month in the bottle but business. That's, I want that raises a question. <laughs> Why not go to a reputable hospital and say, "Here I am." I'll do that. There are no questions right now. No time passes. I do six that. Six hours. I but, do that. But there were days. But you know what? You know what? You know what I could do? I could write on one, write on forty hours, and half the people say the machine was fixed. Allegations of the mayor's drug habits became public in 1983 when this woman, Karen Johnson, Barry's personal friend, claimed she'd used cocaine with the mayor and sold it to him 20 or 30 times. She went to jail on drug charges and served time for refusing to testify against Mayor Barry. No comment. Then last December, here at this Ramadi Inn Hotel, police received a tip that another friend of the mayor's, Charles Lewis, was inside dealing drugs. Moments before police were set to move in, detectives got word that of all people, the mayor himself was inside. Well, what was it's going on in the Ramada head? Well, tell me, because... A social visit, that's all. A social, social visit? visit among, see, I come up the rough side of the mountain, and so I have a tendency to associate with people who have 
problems, personal problems, but or societal problems. But you're mayor, and well, you, you I have, have my, an image, I have my own and style. you have a drug war. I have my and own heroes. style. And I just wanted to know what steps have you, or will you begin to take to get more police on the street? Well, one, we're going to order, we're ordering seven new squad cars. Are they going to walk the street, though? Yes. Okay, we're going to have foot patrol. Yes. Okay. They were in one place. They were walking. It seems like mm, you have no handle on this. Well, there's no mayor in America that can stop each and every one of those murders. What we hope we can do is mobilize our community to slow them down. What kind of a life, uh, lifestyle do you have? You see part of it now. I like fish, so I'm eating some fish, but, uh... You take a lot of hits on this, but you're not the mayor. You're not the leader. You're not the guy to be leading the, the, the drug war. But I am, but I'm leading. I'm mayor. Well, I'm mayor. all the power of mayor. Got a lot of respect out here. You can see it. It's the end of a day. 1.15. Overnight in D.C., we had six shootings. One, one fatal. One very critical. All of them appear at this point to be drug-related in some way. They'll end it. What do you think when you hear that? We're going to try to make it in. In a few hours, the embattled mayor will awaken to more bad news from the battlefield. It's a Washington landmark you won't find in the tourist guides. I mean, it's just like a nightmare. Drake Place, a crime capital in the nation's capital. Get on the ground! Get on the spread them out, baby! A high drug area, open air market. Uh, maybe a little PCP, but uh, basically just crack. The open air markets function 24 hours a day? Yes, sir. Let's get any customers away, man. There have been four drug-related murders since the first of the year on Drake Place. Disturbances almost nightly. Who's these machine guns? Yeah. You name it. Spend a day in these neighborhoods of projects and modest homes, and you're overwhelmed by the drug sweeps and pushers. So are the people who live here. Why do you think so many people are getting killed? From drugs. From drugs. Why, though? What's the, what's the, what's the, what it's happens? It's the drugs, the crack, the, the drugs, the crack. Right. It's, it's all out of the community you out here. You have to look at that and see that. The place has never been like this before. I've never seen an ice cream truck so heavily reinforced. Yeah. Got to be that careful, huh? Yeah, man. Shit, ain't nobody getting here kill me. When they start shooting, I duck. It's hard out here, though, man. Nighttime, I go in early because it's very scary out here, man. You don't know what might gonna happen to you out here, man. You can be an innocent bystander and get shot. You got hit right below your knee. Mm -hmm. And you happen to be in the, in the line of fire. In the wrong place at the wrong time. That wrong place was Drake Place. Thank the God, you know, I I'm still have my life. Like an arm. They be shooting around him. They be shooting needles up in there, so, so. Where is that at? Down the street. It's one down there. And it's one down there, and one right there, and one right there. Come on. What do you mean, smoke some cracker balls? I'm gonna take you back. This is a combat zone. Where else do you find constant killing? over the same years, drugs. These hoodlums need taken care of. Like if they ain't sprayed on marijuana, better known as PCP. Where'd you find it? It's all over the place, on the ground, in the cars. We just dove her back and hit them a second time. We made some arrests for drug violations. So um, I think that we accomplished what we set out to do. But there's little relief on Drake Place. Hours later, the dealers are right back on the block.
It is not possible to get AIDS just by being in the same room with someone who has tested positive or even has the disease itself. That is fact. Police have not released the names of the victims. Right now, police say they don't have a motive or suspects in the case. Tonight's murder is the 81st homicide in the district this year. There were 52 murders this time last year. My baby brother gets a headline, and he may get a tombstone. Five hours after a bullet tore into his brain, Zachary Ray leaves surgery. There was extensive brain damage, uh, brain hemorrhage and swelling uh, from the trajectory of this bullet. His brother Bertie and sister Monica at his side. President lives 12, 16 blocks from where I am. 16 blocks from where my baby brother was slaughtered. There is a waiting room right here that you can wait in. There must be an about an hour. He's got a large caliber entrance wound, occipital area. It's resting the top of his brain. You're going to make it a one? Probably not. At Homicide, the midnight tour comes on. Do we have anybody inside the carryout that actually saw what happened? No, no, no. no. Th those people were gone. Incoming detectives are briefed on the Chinese dragon murder, but they must immediately turn to new business, another murder. Anybody got a Donald Bolton? Well, they say Donald Bolton died in the operating room from a stab wound from the back. Anybody here get a stab wound from Donald Bolton last night? Donald Bolden, Downing Street, he's got an ID number. Do you have that information on the brother, family members? We don't know anything about, I mean, we have no information about this murder at all, nothing. Detectives Joe Schwartz and J.T. McCann know that the hours right after a murder are critical. Well, if he's in the from, operating room, he must have been stabbed tonight. The, no, 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 no. Especially now when their caseloads are so heavy. That's, that's why it's so important to keep working on a case until you do close it, if you can, within the first 24 hours. It's generally when you do close a case, because other cases come in and you never catch up. 1.40 a.m., while at the scene of a new murder. They chase them over here. The guy walks up, blows them into the, you know, shoots them in the head. And they get into a Monte Carlo and drive off. They get a break in the one they left back at the office. We found a witness to it when we were up there, OK? Uh, a guy named uh, Muff. Muff was actually involved in the fight, but he's not involved in the actual stabbing. They head back to homicide to talk to witnesses. Everybody's going to have to wake up. Midnight ain't here no more. People are coming in and working. You know it's been a bad night when you come in the door and you see witnesses just all lined out in the hallway or in the little vestibule there, you know. 7 AM. Willie, you ready? Let's go. They pieced together the story. Drug sellers who repeatedly stabbed a customer to take his money. We want somebody to watch the girlfriend's apartment in the back. There's about two apartments we're going to hit. This murder which happened there last night, we're going to probably hit a, uh, if he's not there, we're going to check apartment 104, at least one more unit. Ready? They have names on two suspects. One, a 14-year-old boy who lives near the murder scene. Just one or two. Just, the rest okay. of y'all can stay outside. Do you know where Boo's at right now? No. Who's the one to stab him? Yeah, I was standing right there all the time. I was trying to, I was trying to tell him not to stab him for what? It ain't no sense to do it. I was pulling him away. All right, where's the transport car? Right here, inside here, behind us. All right, you want to just take him uh, right yep. down the hill? This whole murder's over a twenty-dollar crack. Okay. That's all it's about. A twenty-dollar rock. If you saw it, fine. But if you didn't see it, I want you to be lying to cover up for your boyfriend. I ain't coming up for my boyfriend. I ain't see him in it. Well, what happened then? Tell me. What happened? When I was standing all the way, it was. <laughs> Um, show me where it happened at. Come on, you walk, You show me what happened at then. Well, the second suspect, known as Boo, also lives in the neighborhood. He probably hit the man, but I did not see Boo with no knife. All the blood, is that where it all came from? It was, yeah, the blood. It was right here, and it was standing on my outside, too, right here in the hall. Right here. Out let's, here. Let's get my take her on down, too, OK, for a statement. Apparently, they sold him some bad drugs, and he, and he wanted to get his money back. It looks like it's been wiped by me. It's been cleaned off. It's clean. clean. Clean, clean, clean. Are we sure it's a weapon? She said it is. She said this is the weapon that he gave up. It's good enough. The juvenile we arrested for this says that the other person we're looking for, Boo, who he, who he says did the stabbing, is at this crack house. And we're going to go see if uh, Boo Leonard is there. Our backup. In most neighborhoods, most of the crack houses are known to everybody. 
This isn't what you used to do. Yeah. This is a known crack house where people come in to purchase crack, use crack to get high. Clearly, it's, it's all narcotic paraphernalia. This is the last place he was at, we're told. So right now, we just have to wait to get some more information where, where this guy Leonard might be at. So. Hey, Willie, make sure you get the back of 104, OK? Come on, what's going up? Another tip. The suspect is at a relative's home. Could you open the door for a minute, please? I want you to knock on the door. I want you to say, boo, please, please give yourself up to the police. Mm -hmm. Please. You're helping him out. I'm not doing it. You're helping him out. She says he's in that apartment right now, OK? He's, he told her he didn't do it. He was there, but he didn't stab the man. Here, come here. I'm knocking the door. You stand there with me? I'll knock. No, why I got to stand there? Did you call out to him? Ain't nobody in there. There is. Would you please call out to your brother? I'm not calling out to him. No, you're not in there. With no search warrant, the police are stymied. If we went in there illegally, we, we could jeopardize the case, which we don't want to do. Probably in there. Can't do anything about it. Uh, yes, great. Seriously, just be truthful. That's all. That's why we wanted to talk to you before. You ain't never murdered nobody, man. I want you to stay right here for a minute. After we left, Joe and I uh, went back and stood in the hallway for a few minutes, and uh, I heard movement on the inside, so I decided to stay. Uh, next thing I know, there's a the door is being unlocked. They open the door and. There's my man standing inside the door. I should say sitting inside the door. Well, it's a new generation. It's, it's, they're all, most of these people are using crack, using drugs. And it just causes them to do, to do weird things, strange things. You know, they'll kill you for a, a $10 rock, crack rock. They'll kill you for anything at all, nothing twice about it. This group is called Mothers on the Move Spiritually. Most have lost children to crack and violence. All are fighting to save kids who have not been hit yet. This is really a burden on all of our hearts. Jean Campbell started the moms. Her son died two years ago. That pain, that pain is so, so severe uh, that um, if someone took a knife and actually uh, uh, stabbed you, it's not as painful as the pain. Amen. Bernadette Trowell has known the same pain. One of her sons, high on drugs, was shot by the other in self-defense. And I just have to go on. Don't think I don't pain. I still have my days where I fall apart because it is hard. I miss my older son. I had no brothers. My sons was everything to me. The worst part of it is that my younger son has the blood of his brother on his hands forever. Yes, yes. Oh, Jesus. We're going to claim victory no matter how bad the storm. We claim victory. Jackson, you have a basketball game, right? Yeah. Um, Less than 20 minutes from Gene Campbell's home is McLean, Virginia. So I'll see you like it's Land seven, of milk right? and honey and well to do white people. Julia? Yeah. They're going to do um, community service sign up this morning. Penny Morrill is a suburban housewife with inner city sensibilities. Let's listen to Monique, okay? I care about people. I like talking and I like cooking. That's great. Once a week for 10 do? weeks, Penny tries to teach self-esteem in one of Washington's better kept inner city schools. Okay, come on up. Awesome. That is great. Thank you, Albert, for being so great. It was really nice to meet you. What was the one thing that you wanted these kids to walk away with today? What I wanted them to remember above all else was that there was no one else like them. They were each one unique and special, and each one had special gifts, and that they should nurture those and feel really good about themselves. I think it's a joke. I think the mayor is a joke. Uh, I don't know what kind of machinations he's He's deploying, but um, we need more police. I mean, this woman and her husband do not want their names revealed. They live on Allison Street, a nice middle-class neighborhood that's not so nice anymore. Many residents were too frightened to talk with us. 
when I was driving home from work one night, and, and I usually would take the um, street behind us home and drive around. It was blocked off because there was a double murder in the house directly behind ours. I'm very concerned about my family, very concerned. I mean, just the randomness and the disregard for human life, you know, these people don't really care. I mean, I, the, I mean, they don't care if it's a baby or an adult or an old person. I mean, they just want to try out their guns, make sure that they work. We can't be afraid. We cannot have any more fear because we're losing our children just too many. At the end of our 48 hours, the moms hold family night at the church. <laughs> It's through reaching out and helping others that the healing does really happen. And I want you to take that message with you. The district is now being called the murder capital of the country. Across town, residents of Allison Street attend a city council meeting to plead for more police protection. But the council is hours behind schedule. So you're leaving? What do you think? Tremendously demoralizing. And the family from Allison Street is calling it a night. I'm not sure what's going to come out of our work, but I feel good that we're trying to do something. Um, and, so, you know, something's got to give. One way or another, I don't know what it is, but something's got to give. For months now, they've been attacking Rudy Giuliani. One candidate has spent $8 million on negative advertising against Rudy. What are they afraid of? The answer is simple. Rudy Giuliani is effective. He steps on big toes. He's the toughest law enforcer in New York history. So the next time you hear someone attack Rudy Giuliani, remember, the guy attacking Rudy is afraid of something. Rudy's smart, honest, and nobody owns him. Rudy, he'll clean up New York. Pete Rose, banned from baseball. Reaction at 11. And then, uh, you go up the hills and down hills. And up and then you have a steady, constant pace for three minutes. Fast walking. Good for you in the morning. <laughs> Thursday morning begins with more bad news for Washington Mayor Marion Barry. District Police Chief Maurice Turner is expected to declare a crime emergency today. There's been yet another drug-related death. It's depressing to you uh, go to bed at night and knowing how many people. Like we went last night, it was one. By this time, it's one, it's two. It's depressing and it's overwhelming the Barry administration. Drugs come from South America. Guns come from Virginia and Maryland. Dealers come from New York, and pressure comes from all sides, even the very political base that has helped keep Barry in power. They're saying that we've got a war on drugs, and we're fighting a war on drugs, but nothing's being done. Basically, in, in most of our communities, we're not fighting a war, we're collecting bodies. I think we need some movement from you. A group of angry ministers from the same drug plague district Mayor Barry toured last night. They're demanding more cops on patrol and an immediate curfew on teenagers. 18 and under, they're out there, they're selling drugs, and we need to smack their hands now. Mr. Mayor, I think we need to move now, and I think that even tomorrow is too late. We've already had two shootings in our neighborhood in Benning Heights, Marshall Heights last evening. We leave this room, if we don't get some kind of commitment for some help now, we're going to come back. But Mr. Mayor, we're going to come back, we're going to show you all something. We don't come up to people. The mayor tries to stay ahead of this steamroll. We're clear we have a, this is an action meeting, so we, we, we're going to get some action. We need to come to a close. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Barry doesn't think a curfew will work. It's, it's, it's a simplistic solution to a complex problem. He promises the ministers an answer at 4 this afternoon. We'll, 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 get, we'll get some action. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Great right with you, Doc. Great right with you. We're driving the fear here in Washington is, is violence and the killings. He goes to his police chief for advice. The same chief who has branded the mayor's anti-drug Operation Clean Sweep a failure. The mayor called the chief brain dead for trying to cut the program's budget. 
he and I have disagreements like everybody has disagreements. I'm going to continue to lobby the mayor for more police officers. He's going to continue to tell me to do more with less. You satisfied with what the chief's doing? Of course. If I want, he wouldn't be sitting here. <laughs> Thursday afternoon, running late. The angry ministers waiting for an answer on the curfew. But rushing back to that face-off, the mayor's limo is hit by another car. I'm riding cars, you know. <laughs> I'm riding. Second district uh, scout car meeting at 34th and Wood. Can you ride with y'all? Mayor's in the front. Okay. He hitches a ride in our van. Five minutes and four Welcome back. Uh, we've been working hard on this all day. And we have some good news and some bad news. Fred, the, the bad news. Uh, the unfortunate fact is... The city's attorney says the mayor doesn't have authority to order a curfew. Based on that, we could stay here all day and, and, and haggle about uh, what we're discussing. The good, the good news is that we will Police. assign 50 officers from SOD to the 6th District to augment the regular police officers out there. I'm happy to report this hour that uh, Chief Turner has scheduled 50 policemen to begin work in the 6th District. I learned a long time ago that you bang a man over the head to get his attention. Once you get his attention, you start talking with him. We got their attention, and, and we've been talking. So how did that go, Mayor? Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. I mean, another day in the life of big city mayor. What do you say? Another crisis. <laughs> you know, you just solve one, one at a time and keep on solving them. We just get good at it. That's all. <laughs> Last week, the council approved the curfew Mayor Barry didn't want. Ms. It Jones. goes into effect next week. It's Thursday night in the district. And for the kids, the Go-Go Club is where the action is. A place to escape the streets. But there's no leaving the drugs and violence behind. You've been trying to eliminate any weapons or anything from getting into the club. It's like a big thing to kill a person or to have a gun or to make so much money. My cousin died January 1st. He was the first murder victim of the year. Shot in the chest several times. Homicide, often drug-related, is now the number one killer of young people in Washington. Well, I must say that was an interesting scene. That you created. Even the schools have created special classes about crime. These are key questions. What types of crimes are committed against teens? Where are teens most likely to be victimized? How can I prevent myself from becoming a victim? What are the my stakes are getting higher, the kids younger. My name is Malcolm. My name is Natasha. My name is Orlando. My name is Tyrone. My name is Edna. My name is Lewis. I'm Reginald Warfield. It's Arthur Rush. This rehab program is one of the battlefronts. We, we do not come in here to play games. Some of you have drug charges. Some of you have um, burglary charges. My friend got killed last night, named Zachary. You all know the situation in Washington. And you know, the thing that Reg and I do is to prepare young people for the challenges that you all are going to meet in the street. And some of the challenges you already have met. How old were you when you first got involved with this? 16. She ran money for a drug dealer for two years. Do you regret it? No. <laughs> you don't regret it? Uh-uh. <laughs> I'd do it again if I had another chance. See, you, you can work your tail off at McDonald's and Roy Rogers, and you get you look at your check, it's about $5. I mean, you work hard and sweat your muscles and stuff, and you don't get nothing. You can walk out there and get killed, though. But you can stay, sit right here and get killed. If you're going to die, you're going to die. What do you deal? Cocaine. Cocaine? Mm -hmm. What else? That's all. That's all? How old are you? 14. How long have you been doing it? 
off and on and edit them out. Two months. Just two months, so you're just getting started? Yeah. Why? Why did you get started? I needed new clothes. You needed new clothes? Yeah. And what else? That's all. And I wanted to buy a little bit of gold. You wanted to buy a little bit of gold? I uh, had money in my pocket. How much money would you think you make in a day or in a week? Wait, in a week? Yeah, in a week. About 800 About $800 in a week. Yeah. Stop! Jump! All right, all right! Let's go. Jump! You gotta get him at, at the baby age, back down here. If you don't get him, you won't get him. Shoot. Shoot. Calvin Woodland tries to teach young kids a less dangerous game. They've seen their brothers, their uncles, their cousins, some member of the family that seen involved in one way or another in drugs, are uh, getting killed, shot at, shot, OD, and, and so many of our role models, so to speak, are involved one way or another in drugs. How many of these kids do you think have been directly exposed to drugs? These kids are like 10, 12 years old. Three, three, four. How do you know about smoking cocaine? There's people in my front hallway be doing it every day. People? They call pipe <laughs> Five. It's this drug called um, boat. Boat, what's that? This is stay wrapped up in Reynolds wrap and you take top paper and roll it up and smoke it. Six. I'm telling you. Seven, eight. He got sprayed by Uzi. This man, he was walking down the street and he he didn't get he got caught up by the um by the um hustlers and stuff and they thought it was him and they shot him. Nine, ten. Alright. Give me. Come on, get back, get back, get back. You know where these kids go when you let them out of the van? Most of them go home, you know. It, it depends, you know. A lot of them, I mean, don't have stable enough homes that you say sometimes you hope they don't go home. There's no peace in the valley, Jack. <laughs> no peace in the valley. You drop these kids off in the middle of this. Um... This is where they live. They live in the middle of this. This is their everyday existence. This is it. Open the door. OK, everybody, everybody's getting off. Get Nobody off cares about these kids. Man, these kids are lost. And go in the house, OK? If something is not done immediately for these kids, we've lost a whole generation of black kids. I mean this. I mean it very sincerely. Let's go.